Hi, I'm Andy Ditchfield and welcome to Early Doors, a series of short videos designed to give you something to mull over as you start your weekend. Today I'm going to do some stuff around formulas. Nothing particularly complex, just a few little tricks of the trade just to uh, get you through and enable you to edit them and track through formulas if you've got problems etc. So what I've got here is a very basic P&L and in terms of if I want to put a couple of formulas in here so looking at sales if I want to put the average in if I start to type the formula which is equal to average as I start to type you'll see a list down here in this box comes up of various formulas. Average is the one I want so you can use the up and down arrows to get the particular formula when you've got the one you want press the tab key. What that does, it puts in the formula itself and the leading bracket. And then you need to use your mouse to highlight the cells you're interested in. And then press enter. Okay, 2592. <coughs> so if I just highlight those 12 and look down to the bottom, that's my average 2590. Okay. If I want to put the max in, equals MA, or you can double click with the mouse. Again, it puts in the formula itself and the leading bracket. We're looking at sales, highlight them, press enter. I want to do the same for EBITDA. So if I copy these across, control C, cross, enter or control V, I get some very strange numbers. If I press the F2 key or edit or click the left mouse button on the formula bar, it actually shows me what the formula is doing. And in this case, the average is going from C to N. What you can do with this is this is completely movable. So you can hold it with your left mouse and guide it over the cells you're interested in. In this case, EBITDA from January to December and press enter. I'll just delete the max one just for now because the other thing that you can do is if you want, if I copy this down, copy it down, you'll see that it's gone to the row below. So delete that. If I press the F2 key again, when I'm in the edit mode, I can copy the formula from the formula bar, escape out of there, control V, and it copies it exactly without relatively moving it down. So at least now it's looking at the EBITDA line and we can actually just edit the name to say max. So there's a couple of ways on very basic formulas of how to manipulate them. If we look at something slightly more complex now, so if we look at an example of an index match formula, what I've done on the P&L itself is I've just put some conditional formatting on to look at what PLL metric I'm using and what date. And at the intersection, so in this case, expenses for August 22, expenses, August 22, we get 309. If I then look at my formula, which is attempting to do the same thing, I get 296. Ah, so it's different. So there's a slight problem there. So if I press F2 to edit or click within the formula bar, again, it highlights what my formula is doing. But what I can see here is actually it's slightly out of kilter, it's out of line. I can grab the blue box and move it to the left. So we're now we see nicely in line. I can click that green or I can press enter. And now our 309 matches the 309. If I was to change expenses to cost of goods, 374 plus 374 in August. And again, changing the date. Let's change that out to November 736, 736 in November 22. Turning to the detailed syntax of the formula itself now. There's a couple of different ways of doing this. You can either click on the insert function button there and pick the formula and it will work through, in this case it's the index function, or if I click on the match element, it will give you the match elements. But I prefer to do it actually in the formula bar itself. So if I just click on there, the advantage of this is you can get to different parts of the function, so this index or match, and it colour codes the individual elements. So in this instance, if I click on index, the blue B8 to M18 is represented with the blue box around there. 
And if I'm unfamiliar with the function, if I click on the highlighted index, it will give me a help function from Microsoft, which is pretty helpful. Or again, if I go into the match, click on the match, the match function will come up and it'll be explained there. So the other part about this I like is within the function, so this is index, if I click on the array, it highlights the blue bounded box. If I wanted to see that highlighted on the screen, I press F5, which is the go to key, and press enter. You'll see it's got what these call, sometimes call the dancing ants, which shows you that the index I'm looking at. Now, if I click on the row number within the index function, it highlights what part of the formula is calculating the row number. Now, if I press F9, that, as you can see, evaluates the two, i.e. the second row. Cogs is the second row of the index. And then on column number, again, if we evaluate that, F9, the result is 11. So November is the 11th month of the year. So it boils it down, the index formula, to its simplest form. So the range, the second row, the 11th column. Now, it's important to press escape because we don't want to bake those numbers, those evaluations, into our formula. We just want the index and match function. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Please click the thumbs up beneath the video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to leave me a comment. My contact details will appear when the beer is poured. Cheers.